Hey yo everybody, Haku here, and welcome to my Taboo Tattoo Episode 3 review. Sorry that it's taken me kind of a, quite a few days to get this one up, um, but there have been a lot of other things that I've had to make videos on coming out recently as well. But um, starting from the beginning on this one, we got Toko in this weird, strange world, and we actually see uh, Princess Ariabata and uh, Captain Ajita, I believe that, one, that was their names from last episode and they find this uh, slum girl and um, slum girl tries to steal some food from the princess and there is some fan service um, and uh, I don't know this this fan service kind of made me laugh quite a bit because if it was just a weird lewd kiss I would have been like okay lewd obvious sh shameless fan service but th then they threw in the ass grab and I was like what, what, what is this what is this fan service this has gone one step past comfortable for me and um it, it was just funny it was so odd that it was hilarious really um and then I think that's when we actually get our opening credits I believe or at least somewhere in there and also we find out that the girl's name is Il Tutmish. I believe that was her name. I'm just gonna say Il because that's way easier. So uh, Il is uh, within Toko's body and they're sort of like both in there in this little weird mind room place and Toko is fighting against um, Segi. So we get some hype there and of course um, Laka or Raka, I don't remember which. Um, don't, don't remember if it was spelled with the L or the R, but it's pronounced the same in Japanese anyway. But, uh, L Laka was fighting against, uh, Izzy still, until she just tosses a grenade that she made by compressing some air into a rock and tossing it at him, like, makeshift frag grenade. Really cool concept, um, and she runs away. And, uh, we then get, m like, just our main fighting for the Toko and Seiji fight. So Seigi kind of gets his ass kicked a bit until uh, Toko starts arguing within her uh, mind with uh, with it, Eel. So it was they were arguing in their mind that sort of gave the opportunity for Tom to activate his power and use it to pull out Eel from um, Toko's body. And apparently Eel's power for the tattoo is possession, of course, we kind of could figure that one. And um, she's also known as the Schrodinger's cat. So really cool nickname and all. Um, really cool design. I think Eel is waifu material. So um, yeah, it was just really funny. And Tom gives this really funny speech. I love him so much about like how he's gonna fight and stuff. And then Segi just runs in, and we get actual Segi versus Eel for just a second before he activates Void Maker, and she runs off. Now, Void, like, the scene when he activated Voidmaker, I really, really like the music there. The music was, like, this kind of, um, like, screaming violin kind of music, and I, I, I really like that in OSTs, so, um, yeah. I, I, I thought that was a really good music choice, and it was really cool how the uh, Voidmaker just devoured a chunk of the house. So Izzy returns home, and we get the funny scene of, um, Tom and his organs. Um, uh, like, again, some what-the-hell stuff for this anime. That was funny, and we skip to, um, Izzy training Seigi to fight, and we find out, you know, like, you get stronger when you're in drive, which is the form when your tattoo is activated. You, your capabilities get increased, but they get increased, like, sort of base like you don't a person who is slower than somebody and they both go into drive is still slower so if you're the fastest person then you'll be the fastest in drive and so on and so forth so that just sort of makes sense we also find out more about uh tom's power it's like a temporary tattoo that apparently is like I don't know, it's not permanent, but it also has very, very limited capabilities, and I think his was called Noise Canceller, and he can use it to, um, like, get rid of any effects of, was it, paranormal activity? So, it, it, it was kind of like a really weak version of Toma's power from the uh, Toaru franchise. Also, there's this tattoo left on Toko's forehead by Eel, and it seems to be permanent, so I don't know what that's all about. Maybe it's part of the possession power, 
and now she can possess um, Toko at any time? I, I'm not sure. It sort of, it, it, it wasn't really explained, but I'm sure it'll come into play later. Um, then we have uh, Tom and Izzy give a device to Segi that will contact them and like alert him if there are any tattoo users nearby, I think. I guess it would only work if they activate their tattoo, though, because it didn't seem to work when Laka and Eel were following them. Because the next scene, they we find out they are following them while um, Segi and Toko go on a jog and talk with each other. <laughs> There's a really funny and weird cat scene. Like, that really made me laugh out loud, too, when it had the cat subtitles. That was hilarious. And there was the kitten. I thought the kitten was dead, but apparently, or maybe it wasn't dead, and um, the hurt kitten triggers eel. So um, then we cut away from them. Also, I forgot to mention earlier, we do find out this episode that Tom wants to take Segi back to America for safekeeping, but um, Izzy still seems like, because of them possibly experimenting on him, she's still um, questioning whether that's the right choice. And our pretty much last scene before the end credits were that we see Lisa and Izzy going around, and Lisa is a new character, apparently also in the U.S. Army, and um, they go and they're clothes shopping and getting food. And just, that, that's about it. And then we have our ending credits, and we have an after credit scene with Eel in the bath with the kitten and a, a, a wombat? I can't tell what it is. A wombat? <laughs> I have no idea. Capybara? I, I, I don't know. But um, I don't know my large rodentia. Um, and yeah, and we have, um, we have Laka cooking, and we find out that this cool new weapon came for Eel, and Eel is waifu all over. Waifu all over. Um... So yeah, and that's that's all we get. And <laughs> this episode was just sort of weird. Um, but I did think that it was really good, it was really fun, just funny and enjoyable to watch. And of course the animation was definitely nice. Um, there were some parts where this anime takes weird angles that you don't typically see, and I, I don't know, part of it throws me off and part of it feels fresh and new. But um, I did enjoy this episode overall, like a lot. It just admittedly was not nearly as good as the first two, in my opinion. I felt like there was a lot less action. It was more just set up and info dump. We had a lot of info dumped on us, I feel. So, um, yeah, that's it. Eel for Waifu, and uh, I'll give it 7.5 questionable wombats out of 10. Um, so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. So like if you did like the video, um, comment down there and tell me what you thought of this episode and what you thought of my thoughts on it. Subscribe for more um, Taboo Tattoo, 91 Days, One Piece, both anime and manga, um, Fuki Kanda, Mononoke, and more. Uh, follow on Twitter as well if you want, because I'll try to keep you updated there on when I'm posting stuff or pushing stuff back. Got a busy schedule right now, but I'm enjoying it. Lots of stuff to post, including some new stuff. And, um, yeah, so thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.